ever wondered how cloud providers run thousands of virtual servers or how your PC can run Windows and Linux side by side? The answer is virtualization powered by the hypervisor, a special layer that creates and manages virtual machines. Virtualization lets you split one physical computer into many separate virtual machines, each behaving like its own computer with its own operating system and applications. If you are studying for the CISSP exam, understanding how virtualization and hypervisors work is essential. In this video, I'll explain what virtualization is, how hypervisors make it work, the difference between type one and type two hypervisors, and what cybersecurity professionals like you need to know to keep these systems secure. Virtualization in the context of hypervisors is the process of creating multiple simulated computing environments called virtual machines on a single physical computer. Each VM operates as an independent computer running its own operating system and applications, even though all VMs share the same underlying hardware. This approach is essential because it enables multiple virtual machines to run on one physical server, significantly improving hardware utilization and reducing overall costs. The key technology that makes virtualization possible is the hypervisor. It's a special layer implemented as software, firmware or hardware that sits between the physical hardware and the virtual machines, abstracting and allocating resources like CPU, memory, and storage to each VM, each with its own operating system. The hypervisor manages all the VMs, making sure they are isolated from each other and efficiently sharing the hardware. This means you can run different operating systems like Linux and Windows side by side on the same server, maximizing hardware use, flexibility, and security. Let's talk about the two main types of hypervisors. A type one hypervisor, also known as a bare metal hypervisor, runs directly on the physical hardware and does not require a traditional operating system underneath. Instead, it acts as the primary layer between the hardware and the virtual machines, providing its own minimal operating environment to manage hardware resources and VMs. This environment may include components sometimes referred to as hypervisor kernel or microkernel, but it is not a general purpose OS. Because it interacts directly with hardware, a type 1 hypervisor delivers high performance, strong security, and efficient resource management, making it ideal for enterprise and cloud environments. Then is type 2 hypervisor. It is commonly known as hosted hypervisor. This type runs as an application on top of a conventional operating system like Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Because it relies on the host OS, a type 2 hypervisor introduces extra overhead, which can impact performance and security. Examples include VMware Workstation and Oracle VirtualBox. Let's look at how to choose between type 1 and type 2 hypervisors based on your needs. Type 1 hypervisors, also called bare metal hypervisors, work best in several important situations. First, they are ideal for production environments where you need systems that perform well and rarely fail. These hypervisors connect directly to the hardware, giving you the best possible speed and reliability. They are essential for cloud environments where service providers need to maximize hardware efficiency while hosting thousands of virtual machines for different customers. Major cloud platforms rely on type 1 hypervisors for their core infrastructure. Type 1 hypervisors also excel when you need strong security between different virtual machines. This is especially important when you host services for multiple clients on the same hardware. For large organizations managing many virtual machines, Type 1 hypervisors provide the tools needed to control and monitor everything efficiently. If you have servers used only for virtualization, Type 1 hypervisors make the most of this dedicated hardware. And when you run applications where performance is critical, type 1 hypervisors deliver the speed you need by eliminating extra software layers. So when is a type 2 hypervisor the more suitable option? Type 2 hypervisors which run on top of a regular operating system are perfect for learning and testing. If you are new to virtualization, they are much easier to set up and use. Developers often prefer type 2 hypervisors when they need to test their software on different operating systems without needing separate physical computers. 
In cybersecurity training labs, type 2 hypervisors let students practice techniques in a safe, controlled environment. For security professionals analyzing malicious software, type 2 hypervisors make it easy to create, use, and then delete virtual machines quickly after each analysis. And finally, if you need to run different operating system on your regular work computer, type 2 hypervisors let you do this without changing your main system. When working with hypervisors, security must be a top priority. As a cybersecurity professional, you need to focus on these key responsibilities. First, set up strong access controls. Protect your hypervisor with multiple security layers, including multi-factor authentication. Use role-based access to make sure only authorized team members can make important changes. Remember, only give administrative access to those who truly need it. Keep your systems updated. Hypervisors are attractive targets for attackers because they control so many resources. Following a regular update schedule helps protect against known security flaws. Don't delay these important updates. Always monitor your systems. Set up tools to watch both your hypervisor and the network traffic between virtual machines. Security monitoring tools can alert you when something unusual happens, helping you respond quickly to possible threats. Separate your networks. Keep management networks apart from virtual machine networks. This simple step prevents security problems from spreading throughout your entire system if one area is compromised. Protect the physical equipment. Secure the rooms where your servers are located. Limit who can access these areas and keep records of who enters. Even the best digital security can be defeated if someone has physical access to your equipment. Make sure virtual machines stay separate. Set clear boundaries between virtual machines and turn off any unnecessary features that might create security gaps. If one virtual machine is compromised, it should not affect others. To sum up, virtualization with hypervisors allows one physical machine to function as many independent computers, each with its own operating system and resources, all managed and kept isolated by the hypervisor. Type 1 hypervisors run directly on hardware for maximum performance and security, while Type 2 hypervisors run on top of an existing OS and are best for small scale or experimental environments. And if you're working in cybersecurity, enforcing strict controls and best practices is essential to keep your virtual environments secure. I hope this overview helps you better understand hypervisors. I'll see you in the next cybersecurity video. Thanks.